Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Mop Packet Direct and I'm here on Technique Tuesday and we are gonna be finishing up our adventure cowl. I really, really enjoyed this pattern. If you wanna see what it looks like, it's by Amba O'Brien and she also has a shawl out of the same pattern and this is a lovely chevron pattern and it's a little different than your ordinary chevron pattern. It's on a diagonal. Do you see how, how it's on a slant? That's totally cool. I totally, totally love doing this project. Matter of fact, I wanna start another one. <laughs> and I would have made mine much longer, but I'm trying to use stash. And I had this colorway that was in my cupboard at home, and I only had one skein. And it was out of this lovely, this is Malabrigo yarn called Dos Tierros, and it is a merino wool and alpaca blend. And it's hand-painted yarn, and you can see how pretty it is. And I just wanted to show you a couple of the colorways of that, and we do sell this on Alpaca Direct. It's a, a really, really nice yarn. Let's see what the yardage is on here. It is a 100 gram hank, and it is 210 yards. So it's really nice. So baby, alpaca, and merino. What's not to love about that? Plus, it has kind of a sheen to it. If you look at the finished project here, this, um, it just really stands out. It's really, really nice. And I like how it, um, the colorways are blended on these. It's not, you don't have any, you know, splotches where you look, it feels like you tripped and, and, and dropped some dye on the, the project. No, it's, it has, you know, variegated colorway, but looks really smooth and nice in this project. So I really, really enjoyed doing this. And if you remember from last time, I talked about the, I did four stitches on each side because the pattern comes with garter stitch. It just has regular garter stitch on here. And this I have made almost like a double knit edge. Um, it looks very similar to a slip stitch edge, but if you feel it, it feels a little bit different. It's a little thicker and almost like a double knit fabric. You can pull it apart. It's really interesting and it's accomplished by going knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. Then you get to the other edge and you knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. Then when you turn it, you do the same thing. You knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one for four stitches on either side to make that lovely edge. So I was really glad I did that. That made it um, more of a polished look, I think, to the project. And then at the very end, I had to do a Kitchener stitch on mine and this hasn't been blocked on the back here it's just my finished up work here and you can see that these don't quite meet and that's the way the um, pattern is written but I still think it looks quite nice um, the pattern actually calls for a three needle bind off um, I didn't want to do that because um, I did not want my edges to be um, have a garter stitch edge. I wanted it to be straight, so I did it with this. And the only um, thing you had to keep in mind when you're doing the um, three needle, uh, excuse me, the garter stitch when, uh, in the Kitchener was that you need to have pearl bumps. So when you're putting your two projects together, you want each edge to be seen per pearl bumps on either side of it before you begin because the um, the Kitchener stitch is going to create a stockinette stitch. So that's how you main maintain the garter stitch. And I think that when I block this out... Where is the Kitchener stitch? Why don't you run your finger so we um, can see it? The Kitchener stitch is... See, it's kind of kind of hard to feel, but it is right here. So it's pretty invisible. I mean, I couldn't see it. Yeah, it looks pretty good, huh? And and also on mine, when I was doing it, I wasn't able to go to the exact part in the pattern that they told me to before we started the bind off because I was running low on yarn. And I, I couldn't do a, if I did a partial section, it wouldn't look too good. So um, I had to do it where I can do complete sections of color work in between. So what I um, did is for the difference in the stitch count because the side with the center double decreases had more stitches on them so all I did is instead of treating the center double decreases with one you know separating it as one stitch I grabbed a whole bunch of stitches and you can't tell that I did that so if you ever get off 
where you have different stitch count on one side than the other and you're trying to do kitchenering together, you can just, uh, you know, when you go knit off, you could knit two off instead of knitting one. Just treat it as if it was a knit two together. And um, you really can't tell in garter stitch. It looks totally awesome. So as we're going along, don't forget to tell us where you're from. Maybe you can tell us what you're working on. If you have a fantastic pattern that you'd like to share, that's great because it gives me ideas for future Technique Tuesdays. And then, you know, we can bring those out and teach people other things. Maybe you um, have learned something new that maybe I don't know about. I love hearing stuff like that because of course, I like to learn <laughs> and whatever I learn I like to share with you guys so don't forget to let us know and then while you're doing that you're entered to win a prize every week we have a prize it's usually a yarn related item in some way or another whether it's for knitters or crocheters like this last week it was for this grande baby alpaca yarn and we have you guys we encourage you guys to help us choose do you like red or do you like pink and I think the winner for this week was red right yeah yeah it was red color. but it was close yeah, and then um, the one for this week, I was thinking that maybe we could offer some simplicity. This is 55% uh, merino superwash, 28% acrylic, and 17% nylon. And it is a super nice yarn by Haiku. And um, so I thought you guys would enjoy this. It's a nice machine washable and you can make a cute little project with two skeins. So don't forget to help us choose this kind of this ice blue color or teal so ice blue or teal and then we can give that out for next week so don't forget to enter something in the comments and then you too will be entered to win <laughs> which is always fun it's always nice to get a little something yarn related when you're you love to knit <laughs> or crochet should I say so anyway what I was thinking I would do is take a look at what the three needle bind off versus the garter stitch, the Kitchener, and see if what they look like and see which one you guys think you like. So I have a little sample here and I'm gonna come on over. And I just made these little swatches that we could take a look at, right? And this one, so I always, when I do Kitchener, I always, always use a little sticky note. It just helps me stay on track and keep my mind focused. And it has a little setup row that you do. And the first thing that you would do is slip, go in as if to purl, and then go in as if to knit. Then you continue on with knit, off, purl. And I like to snug it up a little bit, but if you snug it up too much, it'll pull it. So it'll what are you showing here? Too much. Which stitch this is, is Kitchener stitch and garter stitch. Mm -hmm. It's totally easy to do. I would say when you're doing Kitchener, don't um, do it when you have knit off purl. When you um, have the kids running around the house purl off knit and if you're doing it don't forget to finish the four repeat so knit off purl purl off knit okay then knit off purl oops purl off knit and things like to get tangled up and you want to make sure you have plenty of yarn usually three times the width of your project for your um, for it to look good together all right and then knit off purl purl off knit And you can see that it's starting to form your garter stitch. Do you see how nice that garter stitch looks? Let's see if I can finish it and then you can see it better. Uh, knit off purl. Purl off knit. And this is what you used on the cowl? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it kept my stockinette stitch on the edge which I, well, I wanted. And purl off knit. Knit off purl. Purl 
of our knit. And like I said, snugging it up is good, but not if you get it too tight, it doesn't look good. Add a couple more stitches. Off pearl, yeah. Pearl off knit. Knit off pearl. Oops, I'm barely holding it on. Pearl off knit. Being unruly today, and then we got a knit off and pearl off. So let's take a look at what we got here. See how nice that looks? That looks nice. That's Kitchener stitch. Right and what here. would you use that for? I mean, use it for the cowl, but what other things? Anytime you're um, joining garter stitch together, I use Kitchener for everything. I've used it for the top of mittens. I've used it for um, socks. I've used it for, I've used it for, you can use it for multitude, multitude, sky's the limit almost. Um, so now let's, let me, um, okay, so I don't have the exact size of needle. I wish I did. But I have this garter stitch here, and I have the purl stitches showing again. And I'm going to see if I can do a... What are you going to do show here? I'm going to do the... This one is called the three needle bind off. Okay. And she said that the right sides need to be facing up. When I tried it at home, it was going to make my stockinette stitch messy. So I didn't do it. So I'm not... This will be a surprise for me. I have not actually... Um, scene. So you have to work two stitches and then you bind off one and then you work another stitch and we're doing it inserting our needle as if knit two together and bring that and then bind off another. So every time you have one stitch left you just have to knit one more. See as if it was a knit two together but you're knitting going in to one stitch on the front needle and one stitch on the back needle. And this is called a three needle bind off. And it's super easy to do. And I'm very interested to see. Now, to me, it seems like normally three needle bind off, it leaves a, a bump on the thing. So I don't know if this is ideal. I think that if you were gonna do the three needle bind off, I would almost rather see it on the inside. So the wrong side of your work. But let's take a look at it and we'll see. We'll look at both sides of it and see what side we like the best. And then you can choose for yourself. So if you do these, if you're doing the cow um, like I was doing, then you'll this will give you a little sample to take a look at it, so you can see what you think. A lot of times I like to do swatches because I, it's a way for me to take a look at what the work's going to look like, and then I don't have to actually mess up my project and have to go backwards and chance that maybe I might not be able to make, recreate it and make it look the way that I would like it to look. Now, here's this one. It kind of gave like a garter ridge. Do you see that? Which one do you guys like better? This one is the three needle bind off. This one's Kitchener stitch. So maybe they can vote to see which one do they like. You guys, tell me which one. You want me to turn it over so you can see what the other side looks like? Here's the other side. It looks like stockinette stitch. So that's the three needle bind off. Mm -hmm. Now turn the other one over. And here's the other one. That's Kitchener stitch. What do you think? <laughs> well, they're going to vote. I have an idea about which one I like, and I'm glad I chose the one that I did. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty cool. I had never seen that before. That's awesome. So anyway, so that gives you food for thought, so you can think about um, when you're doing these projects. Don't be afraid to branch out. Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to make your own little swatch and give it a go and see what it looks like and see if if it is up to your standards of what you like. <laughs> Seems like the Kitchener is the big winner here. I don't know. Yeah, Kitchener is pretty awesome. So for those of you who are afraid of the Kitchener stitch, don't forget this little sticky note. It's a simple note. I go in, I when I, this little setup row, I don't know if you guys have seen it before, but the actual, this is like a little setup thing that you do. And I always remember that I start right here. So I have to, 
do my setup row with the going as if to purl and then going as if to knit. Now I'm ready to do the pattern. Knit off, purl, purl, off, knit. And every time I say off, actually take the stitch off because I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're doing the Kitchener state stitch, they forget to take the stitch off. And another thing that people forget is they go part way through the pattern and they stop. And I would venture to say that here's the way I prevent most of my mistakes with the Kitchener stitch is I never stop until I finish the whole four stitch repeat. I'll go, if the phone rings, I go knit off, purl, purl off, knit. Okay, now I can answer the phone. Because when I know when I come back, I'm gonna be starting at the beginning. So maybe that'll help you guys, for those of you who are out there with the Kitchener stitch. And then I, this, oh, this cowl is so awesome. Like I said, it needs to be blocked again, but oh my goodness, it's awesome. And I'm using up stash. It's part of one of my New Year's resolutions was to get a, a little less stash. <laughs> right, Jim? Yep. Because <laughs> we don't want to buy more bins. We can't. <laughs> There's no place to put the bins. Yeah. yeah, so we I need to use my stash. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed this cow. So if you guys like working with, um, have seen Amba O'Brien's uh, patterns, this is so awesome. And she also has a, um, a shawl. And I haven't, um, I haven't done that one yet, but I'm thinking I wanna do it. So shall we t say who the winner is for this week? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. What, tell what's them, a red color, right? Yep. Yeah. And tell them who. Um, tell them what's coming out this week too. Oh yes, our knit club project is going to be coming out soon. So for all of you out there that haven't checked out the knit club, it's. Um, I try to teach you guys new stuff every single month, and I go through each little step with you, providing videos for each little step so that you can be successful. Because I want you to learn, and I want you to say, "Hey, I did that. Look at this is beautiful. I was able to do it all." myself and once you get over that hurdle of being you know a very beginner beginner it is so much fun because you could do so much with knitting and so anyways that check out that knit club if you need to um, you know get some more skills under your belt <laughs> and then this week what the winner was red and I think it's a good choice because Valentine's Day is right around the corner and let's see who the winner was I gotta find it. Let's see. Oh, Ruth, Ruth Krieger. Yay! You won. You got some baby alpaca. Say your name That's again. That's the score. Sorry. Ruth Krieger. Okay. Yep, she won. So that is totally awesome. And I'm sure you'll love this baby alpaca. It makes such lovely hats and gosh, it's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Great yarn. So congratulations, Ruth. All you need to do is get in touch with us and let us know what your address is, and we can get it out in the mail to you. So for this week, we talked about finishing up our Amba O'Brien cowl. And if you haven't done a chevron on the diagonal, Amba writes beautiful patterns, and I really enjoyed knitting this project. I adventure you should buy, you should get this pattern. This one, either that one, or she has another one. There's an adventure shawl, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. and so, or this cow, and they're both excellent patterns. So take a look at that. And then the Kitchener stitch is totally awesome. I think you should learn the Kitchener stitch. And the three needle bind off does have its place. And for some people, the three needle bind off is totally fantastic for seaming projects together. The only thing about the three needle bind off, what I usually use the three needle bind off for is because it makes a ridge, I don't put it on the good side of my work. I let the ridge show up on the other side of my work. So I would do a th three needle bind off with the wrong size facing together. Um, but the, it is a great technique to learn too. I guess the short of the story is the more techniques that you can learn that you have in your toolbox, the better your projects are gonna turn out. Totally fantastic. Yes, and don't forget to share with your buddies. If you learned something new today, can you push that share button or like and so that we can get out to as many people as we can? 
and then we can all learn together. And if you have any comments, post comments in the comment section. Kathleen is here now. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes, hi yes. Kathleen. She is wonderful at making sure that all of your questions are answered and that you're taken care of, and she always helps me out. So I am very grateful to her for that. And they should vote so, too on that. Yes, and don't forget to vote on the simplicity. And we have the teal or the ice blue. So you choose, and next week we can offer this as a prize. And it's a machine washable wool blend yarn that is really nice to work with. So I hope you guys have a great Valentine's Day. And I, what am I going to be working on next week? Um, I'm not sure what I'm working on next week. Let's see here. You were working on a hat last night. I don't know. Yes, I have been working on a hat. Um, oh. Oh, right. It's called, it's a hat pattern called Luna by Alexandra Davidoff. And so it's a new pattern on Ravelry that I found. And it is really neat. It uses one by one crosses, or they call them one by one crosses, or cable left, one by one cables, just regular cables. And it's super easy to do. And we can talk about how you can do that um, with out using a cable needle maybe. We'll see how that goes. So I will talk to you soon. You guys have a happy, happy Valentine's Day.